Welcome to the main course with me, Natalie Rock. Growing up in a small town in Minnesota, the only exciting cuisine was that of our state fair. Now that I'm in Maine, I am so excited to meet all the talented chefs that create such delicious and unique food. Come with me as I explore Maine and all the different foods it has to offer. Thank you for having us today. It's so great to be here. Um, I would just want to get us started by asking uh, how you guys got started in Westbrook. You know, the Frog and Turtle has been here for a few years. I just want to get some background and some history. Uh, yeah, we've been here actually 15 years um, coming up um, this month. And it starts as any um, restaurant starts, you know, with a dream and um, a vision. And I had cooked for many a years working for different uh, owners up and down the East Coast. And I finally got a chance to open um, a restaurant uh, or take over a restaurant called Ufa in Portland with this gentleman Todd Waters and after about four years I had bought him out and uh, it was a small like 40 seat restaurant and it was a little bit more higher end and um, you know it was alright but it was always just going to be a paycheck and then um, you know I had a, a new wife at the time and I'm a baby on the way and I wanted to do something that was going to generate a little bit more revenue for the family and we had bought a uh, multi-unit out here in Westbrook and so we were looking um, for new locations to move to. Our lease was coming up. We found this spot. It used to be uh, Chickie's uh, Fine Diner and before that it was the Cornerstone so it had some nice history to Westbrook and um, it was a good prime spot and we came in we renovated it, made it our own and um, after I would say about eight years that Cody's um, had been dining from Ufa and followed us out here. They actually lived in Westbrook and I was at the end of my wits of trying to be like, can I be a chef? Can I be a restaurant owner? Can, how do I do on boats? And the restaurant's getting great reviews and it's blowing up and we're busy. And um, I took Guy out for a cup of coffee. It was uh, <laughs> the best, worst cup of coffee ever. And um, talked to him about like, Guy's been, been very successful in the engineering field and um, with his company um, previous. And so I was like, hey, how do you do it? How do you manage it all? And I'm just, I just can't do both. And uh, he called me back up a couple of days later and he said, what do you think about us buying in and partnering? And they came in with a very uh, small percentage just to, as the joke was, uh, if nothing else, we'll eat for free. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then after like about a year or so, um, you know, we all sat down and we had a chance to buy the building and, uh, and then doing buying the building, they understood um, the next vision, which was to build everything you see up here and um, expand the kitchen. So we're able to um, produce the food necessary for two floors and um, 
yeah, it was really, um, truly, truly awesome. And at that point, we've just been 50-50 uh, partners together. And um, it's truly uh, been a wonderful, wonderful um, experience. And, uh, you know, it was the, I had worked very hard for so long, and then that really became the opportunity of a lifetime, me yeah, and the Cody's absolutely. and having them come in. So Definitely. always super grateful. So Guy, you have a background in environmental engineering. I wanted to know if you had any background in restaurant. Only in high school. <laughs> Three years at daring ice cream, scooping ice cream, and the short <laughs> order cut. So, uh, but at the same time, it did give me some insight into the restaurant business, you know, working 60, 70 hours a week as a high school kid. Uh, I did get to see and meet a lot of really great people in that business and, and to understand the commitment it takes definitely, for definitely. a restaurant. And as you are now a part owner of the Frog and the Turtle, how has your experience been owning a restaurant, you know, and being able to help management manage it? Are you falling in love with it more? Are you? Yes, it, it, <laughs> certainly. Uh, I think it, originally it was more of a silent partner uh, role for Jane and I. And uh, with uh, COVID, it's been uh, all hands on deck. And, it, it, and actually, we've had to think outside the box uh, to to uh, for these last two years uh, to make sure that the lights stay on and the employment. Uh, they, we have a great staff here. Uh, they work really hard. the name I mean the frog and the turtle that's a bit of a unique name I have to know if there's a story <laughs> well with any um, good name there's a story so um, when we first started looking at like our concept and what we wanted to do like we broke it down to like different categories from your fine dining restaurant to your um, chain restaurant to your local pub and looked at all the pros and cons of them all and what you liked about one, what you didn't like for other, like your local pub, the bartender knew your names, you knew your drink, but the food was never really that good. You know, um, you know, your high-end restaurants, the food's awesome, but you know, it's pricey and this. So we were like, how do we make like an everyday eatery that still has chefs cooking from scratch, but you could get like a really amazing burger, or you could get a really a pizza with like top ingredients on it, like pancetta and stuff. Things that you just really weren't seeing um, you know, 18 years ago, 15 years ago. And in the search of it um, and looking at stuff, you know, the internet's kind of coming up big. And like, we started hearing about all these gastro pubs in Europe and uh, just really look at kind of duplicating that formula. Cause we're like, wow, it's pretty much what we're doing. And we just finally someone put a name to it. And so, you know, that's what we went. We don't really focus so much on the gastro pub part of it anymore. We just kind of just say we're a pub, but it, the original gastro pub was called the Eagle. Um, so we kind of wanted to pay like a little bit of tribute to that. So we wanted to use animals. Uh, we're French Canadian. Uh, my uh, wife at the time, Heidi, you know, we both, uh, she was uh, from Northern Maine. I was, you know, Sanford on the mill town. So we knew it was going to be the frog. And at first it was going to be the frog and pig. And then we were like, I don't know. And then we were thinking about frog and toad because they're both aquatic animals. And, and uh, Heidi was like, well, nobody likes toads, they're ugly and they're <laughs> disgusting and uh, I just don't see it. And she's like, what about turtles? And then like right there, it was like that beam of like, hallelujah, <laughs> you know, and uh, you could see them both hanging out on the, um, you know, the log together. They're not enemies, they're both in the pond yeah. together. So, they're, so you know, the frog always kind of represented uh, our French Canadian history. The turtles are like everybody else and you're all coming together, <laughs> hanging out in the pond together, yeah, so to speak. Yeah, I like and, it. Uh, 
that's kind of it. If anyone knows me, I'm kind of like a mile of minute all over the place, uh, like a frog. Heidi uh, is very methodical, so she was kind of like internally, even though she's uh, French Canadian too. So like, there just was tons of plays. This is French town that we're in, so it kind of worked. That the river was right there, and then. Um, you know, that's kind of the history of it. And that's great. Yeah. It was cool. Like everybody would call us up and like, that is the worst name. Nobody <laughs> uh, is going to go to that. They're going to think you're like a aquarium shop. <laughs> and like the mayor at the time is like, hey, we know you're like talented and all in Portland, but we, our restaurant was Ufa. We were expecting the restaurant to be called Ufa. So everybody from Portland would come out here. And I was like, now don't you worry, man. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> come for the food. Like, we'll be OK. And like, I mean, guy can have his shirt on at that golf course or I'll have a hoodie on, I'll be at, you know, Wells Beach or a Gunkrit or something, someone will be like, Oh my god, frog and turtle. I love that place, you know, like the branding just works super well. That's great yeah. to be able to be recognized out yeah. in public, especially so far away. So I had some questions about your community involvement. It seems like you guys do a lot of your music. I see your stage is set up outside. We got some great shots of it. Would you mind speaking a little bit to that? Yeah, um, first the stage outside, that's on Discover Downtown Westbrook. I'm fortunate enough um, to sit on the board of directors for that. So um, they're working big to bring attention to Westbrook's downtown and the thought process of it is does the downtown grows, all of Westbrook grows. So that's uh, them, uh, me and uh, my buddy Mike, who's on the board as well uh, from Glacial Meteors. He, uh, we've been just planted together. So they're very good at the design marketing element us having knowledge of getting bands. We've been really good at booking the bands and uh, that stage started as um, a little um, eight by eight platform, um, two inches off the ground on the sideway, <laughs> sidewalk uh, three years ago to what you see now. And wow. um, we've just uh, keep fundraising all the businesses up and down Main Street. They truly believe in it. And um, you know, they've given um, sponsorships. And the nice thing about it is it's, it's all local small businesses really putting their heart and soul behind it. You don't have any of these giant, you know, multi-billion dollar corporations handing you a check. It's like every mom and pop business around here really truly believe in it in our process of being Brandon um, Westbrook as Maine's Music City because we have a rich history of music here from like uh, Rudy Valley all the way through to today. So speaking a little bit more to the pub side of things, what kind of menu do you guys offer? Any sort of special dishes or anything like that you guys are known for? As James mentioned at the beginning of French Canadian cuisine, uh, including a pub menu, the things uh, standard uh, fare such as poutine. Uh, and uh, when, when my son comes here to eat, he always orders a large just for himself <laughs> and everybody else can share another, another dish. Uh, it's uh, and it's all from scratch, and I think that is where the the flavors and the, the creativity of the chefs that we have here uh, really bring out the 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 food, the the ambiance of yes. the food and things, and uh, it's a uh, it's why I think it. Is James describes the restaurant as a white tablecloth restaurant without the white tablecloth, and Very it nice. really does bring in the, the diners that are looking for that those uh, that next level of dining for their food Definitely. and things. And uh, it's so uh, the desserts we have a one of the desserts a teardrop of happiness that's been on the menu since the beginning. It's, uh, it's a go-to for any occasion. <laughs> uh, the, uh, it's all, all chocolate. So oh, okay. It's easy, <laughs> easily the, the pick of the, of the list. Uh, but it's, uh, and it's a menu that changes seasonally. Okay. Uh, the, the, the crepes, for example, in the fall and the winter. So things a little more hearty. Uh, fresh seafood. We have uh, fresh seafood deliveries, whole salmons that the that the chefs fillet each day, uh, haddock, for example, and things of that. So it, it's an, a menu that has specials every day, along with uh, the just freshness of the, the meats and the and the, uh, the fish, the poultry. Yeah, definitely. It sounds delicious. Do you mm. have a personal favorite? <laughs> so when we're able to get fried clams, for the the. the <laughs> <laughs> He's shaking yeah, his yeah. head. <laughs> <laughs> we, 
So for me, I love spicy food. Okay. And so what I do is I, they make their own sauces for their, the, the uh, chicken wings. And okay. I have them sauce up my fried clams. <laughs> oh, the, that's and, great. And but uh, no, the, the steaks is actually truly the, for me, it's a, I'm a meat and potato person. Uh, the, the steaks here are, are awesome. That's um, great. So. James, do you have a favorite? Um, yeah, I think it's, you know, I think it's all across the board good. Like we don't, you know, whether we're doing um, our house made um, street tacos and like some places you can only get like chicken or pork, we'll allow people to mix them up and like they're always blown away like how much thought and process goes into, you know, like a $17 um, entree and that, that the, the taco shells are, the tortillas are hand griddled to order, roll to order and made, you know, the pulled pork one, you know, we got four hours of a brazen process to, to shred it. And um, so people have these and they're like, man, this is like insanely good. And like that salsa is made in the house. So I think sometimes um, some of our moderately priced um, items like really showcase um, the skill and attention that a chef can have to that. Like it doesn't always have to be the uh, $72 tomahawk steak, you know, yeah. that. Uh, and I think that's why we're busy, especially midweek all the way through is that everybody's like, I don't have to check the bank account before I come here, but. I, so I got I got to say the charcuterie board um, and cheese plates here. If you like charcuterie and cheese, it's um, a step above what anyone else is doing. A lot of places will buy hard salamis, they'll buy pâtés from, you know, um, a high-end uh, purveyor and just put them on the board. Like we're doing everything in house, so it doesn't matter if we have like a hard Genoa salami, we've made it in house. A pancetta, we've made it out. Spicola, oh. which is similar to a prosciutto, we'll have a leg of. Um, lamb you know uh, hanging and curing in house so like wow. pates everything's made um, from scratch even guy talked about the fried clams even the dredge like we don't buy like a dredge like the insanity of my head is like we have to make it in house we make fresh bread every day ice creams we'll make ice cream you know our own bacon we make our own bacon just because i'm like i don't want our food to taste like anybody else's food yeah, so. it definitely gives it that unique aspect that mm -hmm. unique frog and turtle sort of taste that people mm -hmm. love so much so speaking of the future of the Frog and Turtle, where do you guys see yourself in Westbrook the next five, ten years? Uh, I know, for me, I see myself standing in the corner over a six burner range cooking. You know? <laughs> I, I love to cook, you know. Uh, it's a challenging market as we, uh, for the last three years, out of everything that you've weathered and um, that they keep throwing at you, but you know, I always my philosophy has always been um, small steps, long journey. So you know, you do exactly what you know well, you, you try to look at the market, you have uh, six months projections, you have um, yearly out projections, but I mean, as far as expanding, we expanded, you know, so you don't really have much bigger, we're never gonna open a second restaurant, we're not gonna, you know, do it, you're not gonna put a third story on, so you just try <laughs> to keep refining uh, what you do well and keep the energy level for your staff there, and um, hopefully that you're always, uh, a good steward to your community, which is important to us as well. I think one, one of the areas that will help us succeed is the way the city has been growing. Uh, we have the development just across the street with Harvest. There will be the hydroponics and the fresh vegetables that we will be able to get year round. Uh, the, the, the city has been looking forward or, or, uh, so that the growth uh, is in a controlled way, but at the same time, it's bringing a critical mass down here, and that's what we need to yeah. be successful here. Uh, we have our, our reach, as James said, you can go to Kennebunk, even Massachusetts and elsewhere, and they've heard of the frog and turtle. Uh, and so having that, you know, having people down here, uh, that, that's part of the equation. Uh, and so, the, and I know the city has been very helpful over the years in making sure that uh, they're they're helping us, you know, reach those those ends that we're looking for. Thank you, Guy and James, for having me and speaking with me today. It was great learning about the frog and turtle. And make sure if you're in Westbrook and you need some poutine or some live music, you stop on in.